Now you should be hearing my voice on the left side. Now you should be hearing my voice on the right side. You are all set. Enjoy the presentation. Welcome to the Dexable Live Video Broadcast. Good speakers or headphones will improve your listening experience. Let's take a moment for setting up your system. First we will confirm that the YouTube setting is on highest quality available. Now you should be hearing my voice on the left side. Now you should be hearing my voice on the right side. You are all set. Enjoy the presentation. Welcome to the Dexable Life video broadcast. Good speakers or headphones will improve your listening experience. Let's take a moment for setting up your system. First we will confirm that the YouTube setting is on highest quality available. Now you should be hearing my voice on the left side. Now you should be hearing my voice on the right side. You are all set. Enjoy the presentation. Welcome to the Dexable Life video broadcast. Good speakers or headphones will improve your listening experience. Let's take a moment for setting up your system. First we will confirm that the YouTube setting is on highest quality available. Now you should be hearing my voice on the left side. Now you should be hearing my voice on the right side. You are all set. Enjoy the presentation. Welcome to the Dexable Life video broadcast. Good speakers or headphones will improve your listening experience. Let's take a moment for setting up your system. First we will confirm that the YouTube setting is on highest quality available. Now you should be hearing my voice on the left side. Now you should be hearing my voice on the right side. 
You are all set. Enjoy the presentation. Welcome to the Dexable Life video broadcast. Good speakers or headphones will improve your listening experience. Let's take a moment for setting up your system. First we will confirm that the YouTube setting is on highest quality available. Now you should be hearing my voice on the left side. Now you should be hearing my voice on the right side. You are all set. Enjoy the presentation. Welcome to the Dexable Life video broadcast. Good speakers or headphones will improve your listening experience. Let's take a moment for setting up your system. First we will confirm that the YouTube setting is on highest quality available. Now you should be hearing my voice on the left side. Now you should be hearing my voice on the right side. You are all set. Enjoy the presentation. Welcome to the Dexable Life video broadcast. Good speakers or headphones will improve your listening experience. Let's take a moment for setting up your system. First we will confirm that the YouTube setting is on highest quality available. Now you should be hearing my voice on the left side. Now you should be hearing my voice on the right side. You are all set. Enjoy the presentation. Welcome to the Dexable Life video broadcast. Good speakers or headphones will improve your listening experience. Let's take a moment for setting up your system. First we will confirm that the YouTube setting is on highest quality available. Now you should be hearing my voice on the left side. Now you should be hearing my voice on the right side. You are all set. Enjoy the presentation.
Welcome to the Dexable Life video broadcast. Good speakers or headphones will improve your listening experience. Let's take a moment for setting up your system. First we will confirm that the YouTube setting is on highest quality available. Now you should be hearing my voice on the left side. Now you should be hearing my voice on the right side. You are all set. Enjoy the presentation. Welcome to the Dexable Life video broadcast. Good speakers or headphones will improve your listening experience. Let's take a moment for setting up your system. First we will confirm that the YouTube setting is on highest quality available. Now you should be hearing my voice on the left side. Now you should be hearing my voice on the right side. You are all set. Enjoy the presentation. Welcome to the Dexable Life video broadcast. Good speakers or headphones will improve your listening experience. Let's take a moment for setting up your system. First we will confirm that the YouTube setting is on highest quality available. Now you should be hearing my voice on the left side. Now you should be hearing my voice on the right side. You are all set. Enjoy the presentation. Welcome to the Dexable Life video broadcast. Good speakers or headphones will improve your listening experience. Let's take a moment for setting up your system. First we will confirm that the YouTube setting is on highest quality available. Now you should be hearing my voice on the left side. Now you should be hearing my voice on the right side. You are all set. Enjoy the presentation. The presentation will start in 5, 4, Three.
Hi, everybody. How are you doing out there? Um, it's a big pleasure to be here again on the 21st of June. Uh, I think it's the official starting day of summer. And um, welcome to everybody around the world. And actually, uh, yes, Roger, <laughs> I, didn't, I did get uh, that nice tan this afternoon. Not the one that you uh, posted into the Facebook group, <laughs> thank goodness. But it was a nice afternoon, and um, I'm very happy. So this was a piece uh, by Johann Sebastian Bach um, with a um, harpsichord cembalo and a backing track um, with uh, the uh, orchestral arrangement. So let's directly dive into orchestral sounds here. So what I did is I downloaded the harpsichord sound here from our library. And uh, you can see there are three different harpsichords in here. That's the four foot, the eight foot, and the coupled harpsichord here. And that's actually the one I have been using, the coupled uh, harpsichord. Let me show this to you. And so that's that one. But we also have the four, the eight foot. The four foot, and uh, I could do a coupling by uh, just using these two, and I could actually, let me show this picture to you in the right way, I could actually blend those two together by the volume, so the first fader, that's the eight foot, the second one, is the four foot, and uh, here we go, blending it together. Or you just go back to um, to this one, which is the coupled harpsichord. Then jumping directly into the T2L editor, here we have again the hammer noise, which is kind of the uh, plug uh, noise in that uh, in that case to be. You can hear it, the mechanical part. And then we have the key off noise, which is very significant for a harpsichord. So let me crank that up all the way. So. Oh, hopla. I got a little bit distracted by the key off noise, I guess. I think uh, that's a little bit over the top. I usually go around uh, 20, 22, et cetera, et cetera. Then another very, very important part in this kind of uh, Baroque music is the tuning. And of course, at Dexibel, we have also taken care of that. So we have two pages in the tuning. You reach the tuning by pushing the menu button. And here's the tuning. Master tune, which I usually go on 442. That's a little bit of my heritage because I've played a lot with um, uh, woodwind players and uh, orchestra, etc. And they are usually on 442 or sometimes even higher. You can always go back to 440, but we stay in 442. Then there's the temperament. And in this case, I actually selected a um, very traditional Baroque temperament. <laughs> So, and you can set the root note here, which is F, which equals D minor. The thing is, this was actually tuning scales from before the well-tempered era. So, uh, if I set the key into F, which is, D uh, which is D minor, I probably wouldn't be able to play something in A flat. Can you hear this dramatically out of tune? or this kind of key, etc., etc. So if I want to change the key, if I want to go for F minor, I have to go to A flat. But now, all the other keys sound a little bit, um, let me say, out of tune. That's uh, part of the deal when using these uh, traditional tuning. So I'm going back to equal stretch right now. But it's kind of a... Uh, all um, authenticity, which is beautiful. In case you don't have a backing track, 
uh, for this piece, you can always make the combination, hang on, I'll show you the screen again, with uh, the strings and the couple harpsichord. And as usual, I'm using my expression pedal to bring in the strings and... And here you are. And uh, today we're talking orchestral sounds. So strings, of course, is uh, naturally is a part of that. But also um, a big uh, part of orchestral tones naturally is the pipe organ. And in this case, combined with a baroque trumpet. And I'm again blending in the baroque trumpet with the expression pedal. And I'm also using my other expression pedal, my second one, which is connected to the morphing socket of the S9 to change. Let me show this picture to you here right away. So I'm doing this movement now with my pedal, but let's go back here. And now bringing the trumpet. And of course, the cathedral kind of reverb. Then, the next example, I'm using again a pipe organ sound. And an English horn, which is now, again, due to uh, the power of T2L, set to playing only the highest note of my chord. So in this case, when I'm playing something, You can hear the melody note is always carried by the English horn in that case. And then... Beautiful. Let's bring in a tremolo for the pipe organ. Let's bring in some strings. It's all about orchestra. Then I created a woodwind section. Um, so this contains a bassoon. Let's just listen to the bassoon. Then it contains an oboe. And a clarinet section. And the bassoon and the oboe are set in the T2L so that the oboe is playing highest note, bassoon is playing lowest note. So when I play chords, the bassoon is hitting the G, the oboe is hitting the D here in this G minor chord, and the clarinet is doing all the three. So that's one way of working with uh, different T2L settings in the woodwinds. Then I made a split point. And we have the um, solo flute on the right side. And here again, T2L parameter, there's also the... You 
in here. Kind of the noise of the air. And it said to polyphony last. What does that mean? It means always the last note that I'm playing is hit. So if I'm playing a chord or playing something like Always the last note is the one you're gonna hear. This has an advantage when you play uh, trills. Because it makes life a little easier. And now we do have that. And all the woodwinds in one row. Then. Let's make another combination, orchestra, bassoon, and percussion. And these are all sounds that I loaded into my S9. And of course, you will find them in the sound library, in the Dexibel homepage, in the sound library. And you can download them um, in a very nice and easy way. So you cannot see my left hand. Hang on. Let's fix that. Oh, that's better. Then I'm blending in the strings with my expression pedal. Then, then I have the percussion. from another tune and all the percussion things. Amazing. Another, um, another example using this kind of combination. here. Another combination. After all, is the year of uh, Beethoven this year. Then, um, from Beethoven, we jump uh, very briefly to Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And I'm using a Celeste, some strings, and a split point for the piccolo flute. And then bring in the strings. Split point. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, why not? Thank you very much, Roberto. I'm happy. <laughs> it's so beautiful music, and we can so nicely play it on the Dexable instruments. Just a brief mention about the... Uh, piccolo flute and again as with all the um, hang on as with all the uh, solo voices we have taken care of uh, of course the sound quality but also of the articulation so if i'm playing um, legato beautiful if i'm playing staccato you see the instrument is taking care 
of the articulation. And again, in the T to L, I put the polyphony to highest. If I would go for last, it would be a little easier for pulling off some tr uh, trill notes. Ah, there's a split point in the way. Never mind. I just got inspired. This was actually a short phrase from Benjamin Britten's The Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra. Beautiful piece going through all the uh, decibel sounds. No, I'm joking now. Anyhow, i just... Uh, okay. So uh, at this moment, um, I would like to invite my colleague and uh, one of the guests that I'm having today in uh, the webinar. And um, he will play on the uh, L3 Classico. And this is actually the instrument where all these uh, solo sounds, all the orchestral sounds are derived from. Uh, this is an instrument, the uh, L3, dedicated to classical players mainly. Of course, you can play whatever you like on an instrument like that. But that's a classical piece of instrument, classical piece of gear that we have here. And naturally, we develop these kind of sounds to be suitable with the L3. But... The cool thing is, due to the um, philosophy in Dexibel with the T2L engine, having the T2L engine in all our instruments available, of course, the sounds are compatible. So we could just transplant, in quotes, them into any of the Dexibel instruments that uh, you are using or that I'm playing uh, um, around. So uh, without further ado, and he's going to play brilliantly on the L3, Mr. Mauro Goya.
Mauro, thank you very much for playing for the Acad Academia Dexival on your L3. So Mauro used uh, the pipe organ sound and he combined the pipe organ with orchestra sounds and then he went all in the orchestra, different sounds, different way of phrasing, articulation, etc. I just got a very, very interesting question here from Dave. So let's have a look. So what kind of string sounds would I use to get the Lush Mantvani sound? So uh, I would actually go for um, large strings. This is a uh, part of the uh, new, uh, the strings new collection that you find on the website, and um, that's a beautiful sound. That's a and what I usually do in this case. I go into the T2L, I increase the attack time a little bit, so it makes the sound more smooth. And the release time. And in case of Mantovani, I would probably go a little longer than usual with the release time. Let's try that. And maybe I'll spice it up with a nobo sound. And I'm completely carrying myself away into the, into the Mantovani feeling. Okay, so uh, hang on. Let me try to go back to where I actually wanted to continue. Okay, so uh, um, yeah, uh, Javier, this is actually possible to put it into all our decibel instruments. The string sounds I've been using is from the, new, I think, new strings or strings new that you find on our website. So beautiful. All right. Um, another um, subject of today, and I don't want to drop that out, was data management. I would just want to give you a short, it's really going to be short in a, in a nutshell, um, about data management in our Dexable instruments. So let's have a look at the computer here and also um, at the screen. So you can see this is my USB stick that I'm using. And I have a copy of the USB stick, so the same one is inside my S9 at this moment. In, here you can see several folders. So this is uh, uh, with the latest update. If you want to do the update, you have to drag these three out of this folder into the root directory. Then you plug the, inst the, the, um, the USB pen into your instrument and you boot the instrument and then it's going to make the update. Let's move back. Then uh, there is a backup folder. We get there a little later. Then there is a songs folder that I've created. So let's open this folder. And you can see in this songs folder, there are three what I call subfolders. So if I'm doing the same thing here on my instrument, I go song list. So this is songs. Then I have classical with these two inside, jazzy with these two, and organ sounds. This is the Combo J7 medley that I have played in one of the last webinars. So uh, you can actually, uh, point being in that you can actually categorize 
uh, all your songs into different genres, into different styles. So on stage, you might be a little faster in reaching them then. Then the next thing uh, that I'm usually categorizing is the user memory folder. So let me let me look there. This is uh, on the USB pen. If I'm going into my instrument in the user memory, I have internal memories, or I go to the user, and then I go to this kind of folder, and I find this data inside. I go to the other folder. I find these two data. This is uh, the um, the two um, user memory settings that I'm using for the webinars at this moment. So what you can do is actually you can load your user programs from the internal memory or you have direct access to the USB pen. So you have much more than the uh, 9 times 9 than the 81 user memories in your direct access because it's completely real time. Then we have the sound folder here. Naturally, you have all the Dexable sound library in this folder, and you can find these sounds if I'm going right here. And the USB area is exactly what I have here. Then we have a setup folder. What is a setup folder? So let's say for today's... Um, let me talk to you. Let's say for today's webinar, we, uh, I have created um, a certain set of sounds, in this case, mostly uh, orchestral sounds. And um, I don't want to reload them one by one by one by one. So I have the possibility of making a backup from the whole sound library as I have selected it in one file. It's uh, loading and saving time is around four, four minutes, more or less. So that's very, very acceptable. You don't need any additional gear for that. You just save it to your USB stick and you're good to load another sound set. That's how I usually work. But we go deeper there. In the end, we decided, and let me give you this picture one more time, we decided to also have a backup folder. What is a backup folder? In the backup folder, you will save all the sounds that you have in the instruments. You will save all the user memories that you have in the instrument. You will save the MIDI settings that you created. You will save the tuning, the velocity curve. You remember the settings for the velocity curve when I go in there and design here my own velocity curve? These are all settings that are actually stored in the backup. And this makes life very, very easy for the touring artists, such as myself. So if I'm arriving at the gig, I can order the S9 as a, from the backline company. I'm arriving there with my USB stick. I put the USB stick inside. I, I uh, import the backup that I have created at home. And in around four to four and a half minutes, the instrument with the sounds, with, the, uh, with my patches, with everything I created at home is exactly the same I left it at home. So this is, I mean, what, what else do you want? That's fantastic for going on tour with these instruments. All right, so much for data management and uh, using of the USB ports. We have talked last time, so you can connect your uh, laptop. You can, uh, of course, have the USB stick, but something I didn't show you yet is to connect a second keyboard. So in this uh, video I have taken from uh, our video library, um, I connected a class compliant MIDI master keyboard controller and you just connect it. It takes the uh, power alimentation from the S9 and then you can have a two manual organ or you can play the electric piano because you need the hammer action for the piano style on the lower keyboard and the synth and organ on the upper keyboard. And in the third example on that video, I have, in addition, also plugged into my laptop. And sim uh, similar to what I did last time with Ableton Live, I created a setup, two manuals, laptop, using of the draw bars, uh, the draw faders for um, MIDI learning and uh, mixing down. So let me just briefly play this short video for you.
right, yeah. That was a short video uh, just showing you what you can do with a second keyboard. And uh, Jay um, asking if it's also possible on the S7 Legacy. That's a yes, of course. All the uh, Dexable instruments have the same strategy and the same uh, USB sockets. Um, so go for it. Fantastic. So now let's go back to some more uh, of the orchestral type sounds. And in this next example, I am actually using uh, guitar sounds. <laughs> Bandonian sound. And in the T2L for the Bandonian, you will find on noise and off noise. That's literally the key clicks of the Bandonian and the valve behind the keys. So let me. Yeah. And then I created a setting with a split point. Left side is an upright piano. And uh, now you can see my left hand. Hang on, let me fix that. And an upright bass. And the bass naturally plays only the lowest note in the, accord, in the, in the chord I'm uh, hitting here. picture is not here. <laughs> Sorry for that. Here we go. Of course, we have to show the compliments. Thank you very much, Javier. Um, yeah, I think so too. The, the acoustic uh, orchestral sounds are amazing. Then another setting I created, and I think I've already played that song uh, once for you, but never mind. It's the ragtime piano. So it's a piano that is actually out of tune, but in a controlled way out of tune. <laughs> So it's not, um, uh, let me say, it's not a uh, any kind of upright or a modified grand piano with a chorus or something. Uh, we have actually asked the piano tuner to detune the upright piano in the way that it sounds like something like that, okay? So it, it sometimes it reminds me a little bit on going to some strange club and... Or the piano of my auntie, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But actually, point being, what I want to do is the combination of uh, the piano and the tuba because we are talking about orchestral sounds. So let's do that. And here we go. And of course. Never forget that we have the beautiful, the most beautiful piano sound in this instrument. Layered with some beautiful... So I got carried away a little here, so uh, ragtime piano. Then, this time the tuba sound together with, uh, with the French horns and some strings. And the strings, I will blend them in a little bit later in this, in this beautiful piece of music written by Mr. Forjak. And 
oboe strings. to the orchestra. It's great. I'm always getting carried away here. Unbelievable. So um, another drift to uh, these kind of combinations. Now this time we go into a uh, more rock-oriented world here. So I created a setting with a synth. And the synth bass from the analog synth collection, an organ sound, rotary speaker, and a little bit of flavor of an electric guitar. And remember, we have aftertouch. So I just wanted to, sh to share this one as well with you. So now questions are popping in. Let's have a look. If I can test the romantic trumpet sound also, uh, the romantic trumpet sound, I might have to look for that in the sound library. So at this uh, very moment, um, probably I have to look for it first and then I can of course play something with it. And then there's Ruben, don't stop. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, the, the Dvorak is amazing and it sounds amazing on the S9, right? And of, of course on all the Dexable instruments. And is there, uh, David is asking, is there a way to split the DXS files to load individual tones from the collections? I was thinking this might allow more flexibility with the file size. David, at this moment, this is actually not uh, what we are doing because many times um, in one of the um, of the sound sets you will have several patches that are relating to the waveforms that are loaded in there so it uh, it is it wouldn't make a lot of sense to to split them up and matter of factly it wouldn't save you any memory at all because uh, we are using the same waves uh, in the end of the day. So uh, we decided not to, uh, uh, not to do that because you might hit patches and the waves might not be there anymore. And that's something we, we actually uh, wouldn't enjoy so much. So, okay, what's next? More, uh, more acoustic uh, solo sounds to come. And this one is a harmonica sound with a split point and an organ on the left side. Soprano sax sound. A 
on the flugelhorn. Uh, flugelhorn so I guess the romantic trumpet is not very far and uh, yes Roger totally agreed Toots Tielmans is uh, amazing and uh, we love him forever okay let's see what kind of questions and uh, Lee hi Lee for thanks for popping in actually uh, at the beginning of this webinar I played with um, I played harpsichord sound and I also explained about it. So uh, once the webinar is done, you will have access to um, the whole video. Just go back to the beginning of um, uh, of the whole thing, and there is the there is the beautiful harpsichord uh, and what you can do with the harpsichord. Then uh, Jay is asking. I missed how with a second keyboard. And now I can't read it to assign with sound which sounds are played by each. Um, Jay, that's something we can today not cover because it would take uh, too much of time. In the end, just to give you a shortcut there, it's about MIDI sets, programming of MIDI sets. So what you should do is when you connect the second keyboard, you check which, key, which MIDI channel is uh, send, sent by the second keyboard. And this one has to match with the receiving channel of one of, in your case, the three parts in your Dexable instrument. That's actually how it works in a, in a nutshell. Okay, we unfortunately, we cannot dive uh, deep in there. So uh, another question from Dave, let me see. Uh, can you assign? I have a question related to Jay's. If you use a second MIDI keyboard, uh, can you can you assign, say, the main layer, the main layer to that and retain the coupled and uh, yes, you can actually do that, Dave. Again, it's a matter of uh, MIDI setting. Um, in the MIDI setup, uh, you can uh, let me. Okay, I'm diving in briefly, <laughs> briefly. Menu. MIDI setting, I would check which is the transmission channel of your um, keyboard that you connect. And then you go there and say, OK, at the moment, is stay, uh, um, status is off. Now I'm matching the MIDI channel here on the main. And I would do the same on the coupled. So in this case, if you want to have main and coupled played in a layered version from your second keyboard, you just put both to the same MIDI channel. That's actually how it would work in short, in a nutshell. So, uh, so, so to say. Um, all right, here we go. Where did I get stuck? Then, brass, brass sounds. Brass sounds is always amazing. Let's see, and we have here. It's one patch, there is no split point, there is no secret. It's just, yeah. Now there's a split point. So that was that one, <laughs> and the questions are popping in. Let me see what Dave has to say here. Uh, are the damper expression pedal um, settings always set globally, or can they set for each patch? Okay, Dave, that's a very, very good question. Let me show you what how and how we are usually doing this. I go into menu, and then I go down to global 
and I go inside global, I usually switch off the auto off function so the instrument doesn't power down in the middle of uh, being backstage or so. Then we have the switch. These are the switches on the instrument, the pedals, the wheels, of course, um, uh, modulation and pitch. And here, and that's what I usually do, I'm setting them into working inside the memory area, meaning they are uh, they can be different for each of the user memories you create. In case you don't want to do that, you can go to global. And now the settings of the switches, in this case, or the settings of the pedals, are then in global mode. So once they're set, they're set for all for all the patches that you are using. So it's your choice. And um, David, that's also something that in the end of the day, we are, we are saving in the backup file. So if you, um, if you made your setting with global or memory, doesn't really matter, it's your choice. And you make a backup file, bam, it's uh, already saved there. All right, so what else to do? A, a little bit more of example. Let me just see if I didn't forget anything. Here is my script, by the way. And it looks pretty good. Okay, so then we have a beautiful violin here. Let's add some strings. Seamless patch change. Let me show this to you on the screen. Now I'm having a harp.
when I fall in love. <laughs> Here's the song. Oh, Roger, you, <laughs> you are so kind. Thank you so much. Okay, so that was uh, the overview of the orchestral sounds. Big, 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 huge additional power to the decibel instruments where we have the beautiful piano sounds, where we have the beautiful electric piano sounds, the organ sounds, the synth, all the additional possibilities that we have covered in those last, with, ones, uh, with the one of today, in those nine webinars. And uh, yeah, the orchestral part is, uh, I'm, my heart is totally into orchestral music and sounds. I think you could hear that a little bit. And uh, yeah. I'm so happy that we have this at Dexivel. I'm really, really happy. And I'm so happy to share this with you. So thanks a lot for joining in today. All right, so um, without further ado, there is, of course, one very special guest today. Um, it's our tradition. And uh, today I call him the guest of honor. And because, um, yeah, you will hear and you will see why. So uh, I made the interview somewhere in this week and I'm just going to play this video now for you enjoy and um, big round of applause for the man himself Mr. Luigi Brutti today's guest of honor was born in Marche region in Italy at the age of six he started to study the instrument that he masters so perfectly and in 1977 he became world champion in playing the accordion Later, he worked for a record label as a composer, performer, and experienced synthesizer programmer for the creation of movie soundtracks. And he was deeply involved in the development of digital musical instruments, working with the European subsidiary of a well-known Japanese brand, where he developed the physical behavior modeling technology that drives the famous V accordion. He got honored with the prestigious Confédération Internationale des Accordionistes Merit Award for his contribution to the international accordion movement. After Roland Europe has been closed by the Japanese headquarters, he recruited 12 of the best engineers and musicians that used to work there, some of them for up to 35 years, and started a new adventure together with the Pruel Company. Dexibel was born. Welcome together with me, the father of Dexibel, Mr. Luigi Brutti. Ciao, Luigi. Ciao, Ralph. Ciao. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? How is everything? How is everything in Italy at this moment? Let me say, good. Now is uh, is good. We are. Uh, slowly coming back to normal life oh that's that's beautiful fantastic it's, it's... Oh, only only the weather is uh, a little bit crazy we had a uh, june uh, always raining so but... the weather has the lockdown now you are back yes. on the street but the weather has the... oh i'm sorry to hear that <laughs> yeah. we we actually in berlin we just reach into the summer which is yeah. be it's beautiful so yeah, yeah we're but, getting there but summer will come we yeah. come for sure in, in a few days. Absolutely. So, um, Luigi, thank you very much for being with us today at the Academia Dexibel. It's a big, yeah. big, big honor to have you here. No, it and is a, it's a pleasure for me. It's a pleasure <laughs> and, for me, Ralph. <laughs> and I, uh, I like to uh, ask you several questions about your visions when you started the whole project. So, one of your visions was to create a completely new sound. Uh, engine technology that would be perfectly suited for acoustic piano, electric piano, organ sounds, and this became the technology that today, today we know as T2L. And in order to create this, I think you have the perfect team for this venture because the 12 Dexible people that each has around 35 years of experience and knowledge, can you, I mean, if you, if we calculate this all together, that's um, around 420 <laughs> years of... <laughs> a lot of years of uh, experience. So uh, we, we all, as uh, Dexable players, we are very grateful that you acquired this kind of, uh, this kind of power around you. So um, 
Can you please tell us a little bit about this? Yes, it's, a, it's a quite a long story because uh, uh, I live, we live in a place where historically uh, there was uh, several company uh, that create in the years before the accordions, then uh, electronic organs and then synthesizer. And uh, in the same area, in the market region, uh, there was a company called Seal yes. that born from a group of people coming out from Farfisa, the famous Farfisa company. Okay. And uh, actually, I started to work for this company when I was uh, still not major age. So I was 17. All right. Okay. And uh, this company uh, made a lot of uh, fantastic instruments like uh, uh, synthesizer, keyboard. Uh, then it became... Uh, uh, Roland Europe. Okay. So in 1988, yes. we became Roland Europe. And uh, most of the same people, including myself, crossed from Seal to Roland Europe. And uh, then in 2014, Roland decided to close many plants around the world, including uh, the one in Italy. And uh, mm. I recruit a group of uh, engineers and musicians, and we started uh, a new adventure. And uh, imagine we started here, where I am now, in my studio. Because okay. when the, the Roland closed the company, we, uh, with a group of uh, friends, uh, engineers and musicians, we started the idea of making a new sound generation. Yes. And uh, the best place was to start working uh, in my studio. Okay. Because we start recording uh, uh, the real instrument, making some experiment. Uh, and uh, then we shown our result to uh, the president, the founder of an Italian company uh, called Proel, yes. uh, is uh, the engineer, Mr. Uh, Fabrizio Sorbi. Yes. And uh, immediately... He, was, in, he the, was impressed, huh? Yes, he was <laughs> yeah. impressed, like the idea, the project. Yes. Uh, and uh, as a crazy man like me, uh, started <laughs> he might this be, new... He might be listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, you know, to, to create a company in Italy made in Italy and everything based in Italy uh, uh, is a kind of very, very difficult uh, uh, idea. But, okay. but behind these difficulties, uh, we had uh, uh, several uh, uh, new technology and one of these technology was based on the uh, sound generation. Right. So despite what many other companies are doing, uh, that is creating a, a smaller, smaller, single chip instrument, uh, that of course is a benefit uh, for the turnover of the company because they reduce a lot of the, of the cost. Mm -hmm. But the specification and the quality is a kind of a very big compromise. Yes. In our case, we decided to go in a completely different uh, uh, way. So we decided to use uh, a four core CPU. Yes. So very high speed CPU. And we made the specific hardware, software, and content. So all the data yes. uh, to create all together what we call uh, T2L technology. Wow! Wow! That's uh, that's and it sounds very impressive. So I think you did the right choice going in this direction, and I also think, um, of course, technology is con continuously evolving. So um, sooner or later, the CPU technology will go a step up. So I guess this will open another door for Dexibel. Yes, th this is our uh, strong point. So when you create a single chip because of the huge investment, uh, 
you have to use this single chip for so many thousand pieces and for so many years yes. that you are uh, kind of blocked, stuck there. And if even if the technology make a, a giant step ahead, you have to keep using that technology. In our case, also because we wrote everything that is uh, transplantable to next CPU. Yes. Uh, when the uh, the CPU are ready with a higher specification, bigger memory, uh, we are ready to jump to the next step of the of the technology. Wow! I mean, that's that's what uh, what everybody's wishing for, right? Uh, to have this in a in an instrument, not in a laptop or in a computer. To have it in an instrument, booting the instrument, and boom. You just play. Yes. I, I mean, that's fantastic. That's yes. a very, very good job. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. So, <laughs> so in the in the last couple of interviews I conducted with uh, all the different Dexable engineers and musicians, I learned that basically probably all of them have been born in Marche area in uh, in Italy, yes. and um, and uh, that's uh, I mean that's a beautiful place. I've been there several times to visit R and D plant. And um, because all this talent is coming from there, is there something in the water there? <laughs> <laughs> what, what we call aqua viva water. <laughs> uh, that's, no, really. that's, why you, that's why you call it aqua viva software? <laughs> no, our aqua viva really is the place where we are now. Okay. And uh, of course, the, the name of the town came from uh, aqua viva means... Uh, Uh, a live water because yes. there are uh, many kind of uh, uh, river and fresh water. Uh, so, oh, but yes, pro probably something. <laughs> There's <with> something, water. <laughs> some musical talent uh, coming from the from this kind of. That's beautiful, fantastic. From the mountain, uh, from the mountain. <laughs> from, uh -huh. Okay, that's that's good to know. So uh, next time I'm uh, visiting, I have to drink some of this. Uh, <laughs> Of this special water, special water. And see what happens. All right. So um, you didn't stop at the uh, T2L for the Dexable instruments. Um, you have also developed something else that I'd like to talk to you about. Because many, many of uh, many of you, many of us are probably still familiar with the famous uh, E20 G1000 G70. These have been really famous arranger keyboards. And yes. uh, you're also holding uh, several important patents in this area. And a new one is uh, also uh, there, which is called the Harmony Polyfragmenter, which is a musical accompaniment um, kind of app and dedicated to smartphones and tablets. So. Uh, I think this is the route uh, that we will have or that we have today in Xmuir. Yes, exactly. Uh, thanks to our heritage and our uh, experience on the Arranger, uh, as you mentioned, uh, when we were uh, Roland Europe, uh, we have been the first to bring the Arranger in a kind of semi-professional Uh, usage. Before of that, uh, all the Arranger keyboard was just a toy to play at home. Okay. And so at that time, uh, I had the idea to bring uh, uh, the way of of, of writing the pattern uh, in a more professional uh, step, and we bring it, it in a, a Roland Sound Generator to create what has been a successful lineup, as you mentioned. Uh, the E series and uh, yes. the G series. But then when we start thinking uh, as, a, as a decibel, uh, we decide to completely change the game. So an arranger keyboard, apart the, the price, the cost, uh, I believe that became very easily old. Mm -hmm because all the pattern data is based on the on the sound yes and uh, the sound that you put in a keyboard even if it's a, a big library uh, can become old in a couple of years okay so it's impossible on that type of hardware instrument to follow what is the 
the fashion, the new hit song. So we decided to do everything in audio. Mm -hmm. So our idea is to make an app that doesn't work with MIDI data and sound generator, yes. but work directly in audio. So it means in a recording studio like this, Yes. we record the pattern with real musician, but also with the uh, plugin, all the stuff that normally is used for uh, a, a recording production. So when you want to record uh, your, uh, your song and uh, the user now can download the app yes. and uh, buy a single pattern for just one euro. Oh, well, that's, I mean, that's amazing. That f fantastic. And, and I think and, in one of the webinars before, we have seen a little bit of the Exmuir. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, you are in the middle of creating a yes. new, new uh, what's I, it called? I, pattern? You call it pattern data, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I am in the studio now because I'm uh, having a recording section. So I just move my laptop so I can show you. Okay. We, we use many things from uh, uh, a vintage uh, tube mixer uh, yes. uh, to, to some kind of uh, oh, nice. Uh, nice gear. Uh, tube uh, preamp as well as many, many uh, plug-in. Uh, in this moment, we are recording some uh, special drum pattern. Uh -huh. And uh, we are uh, also... Uh, tuned not only to recreate the groove, the pattern, yes. but also the specific sound. For instance, now we are recording rock and roll and a twist of uh, 60s and 70s. So okay. the drum sound was not the same. Of course. So of today. Yes. So we use the specific drum set uh, of that time, yes. but also some vintage gear, for instance, uh, I'm using okay. this microphone uh, yes. to record the, the, the bass kick, uh, as well uh, this microphone uh, as a mono overhead, uh -huh. because at that time the, yep. the overhead was just mono. Yes. And finally, the sound that you get on the styles, on the pattern that you download through the x uh, is just the same with the same test, uh, the same feeling of uh, the typical recording of that area. I mean, but of course, we are also doing uh, contemporary patterns. Yes. Eh? So it nope. depends on the age, we, we use a specific that. Uh, I mean, that's really cool. Uh, matching this, for example, with an instrument like uh, the J7, where you recreate the vintage uh, organ sound, now you recreate the vintage groove patterns with the with the right flavor and taste. I'm curious to, to try these new patterns out. So uh, do you already yes. know when they when they are coming uh, uh, to the market? I, I believe because it's, it's a kind of uh, very complex and, and long job because it's, it's just like recording uh, an album. Oh. Uh, but e e even more because we we have several genres so okay. we have to change completely the setup every okay. time. Uh -huh. uh, we believe to be ready beginning of July Yes. with 20 new patterns, that is a, a huge number, and divided between uh, some evergreen uh, up to contemporary, very, very modern pattern. Oh, so uh, I think we are all waiting desperately for that, to to uh, to try that and to enjoy this kind of uh, approach in the Exmuir. And at at this moment, I would like to also thank uh, especially to Mr. Fabrizio Sorbi thank at you. the Proel Company for believing in all this project, for supporting it, for bringing it to life, and of course. Once again, uh, Luigi, thanks a lot to you and uh, for you. realizing your visions and to let all of us participate in these visions. So I have uh, one, one more time. Thank you very much to the father of Dexibel. Thank you. And let me take this opportunity, Ralph, to thank you. 
very much. Me? Yes, okay. because you, you don't remember, <laughs> but uh, I call you when the Dexibel sound engine was just a baby. <laughs> yes. And uh, probably when I phone you, you think, uh, what is this uh, what is guy this? Doing, yeah. <laughs> doing in Italy? <laughs> and you have been the first to believe in this project oh. and you are doing a really fantastic <laughs> job uh, to promote. Thank you so thank you so much. I mean, something to, uh, to promote something great like that is a honor and a pleasure anyway. So, <laughs> so thanks a lot, Luigi. Thanks, uh, Mr. Sorby. And um, nothing more to say then. Let the adventure begin. Yes. Enjoy the webinar. Thank you. All right, Luigi, one more time, thank you. Thank you so much for um, being our guest of honor today. And um, guys out there, of course, I have kind of bribed Luigi so he can give me the better version of the music data that he's producing at this moment. And I made a uh, short video just uh, with um, running some of these uh, patterns and I want to share this with you. Let's do it. So more to come very soon. Uh, this was a short uh, excerpt from the uh, new pattern data that is just created uh, from Mr. Luigi Bruti. And uh, some uh, questions are popping in. So let me refer to these questions. And there is uh, Mr. Lee Tingler asking, why is the display so small? There is uh, many answers to that. Let me give you one uh, or two in this uh, short time. So let me show you the display. This is, uh, of course, you can see it here. And first of all, this display contains all the information that I actually need when I am on stage or when I'm working here at the instrument. At Dexibel, we are going for... Um, instruments in a reasonable size. So uh, we don't want to make them too huge, too big, and not too heavy. So you just have to carry it around. A huge display would be completely in the opposite direction of that. So the smaller display is very precise. It's good to read, and it works perfectly. In case you need more space, I want to show you, because it's always sitting here next to me, my iPad. And uh, let me give you the different camera angle together with this. And on this iPad, I'm running the Vivo Editor. Okay, you, let's get rid of this one as well. So you see, I have the whole operating system of my Dexable instrument on my iPad, including organs with the drawbars, mixer functions with effect settings, copy paste for effect settings, the control for the master keyboard zones and saving my memories here. So uh, once again, um, the internal display gives me all the information I need, especially when I'm on stage. The instrument due to that fact is not overly huge, which is a big advantage carrying it around. If I need more uh, visual, then I can connect my iPad or my iPhone for that matter. 
Then uh, David, um, David is uh, thank you for the compliment about the arrangements and transcriptions. David, most of the stuff I have done was just improvised now, except the Johann Sebastian Bach, <laughs> of course, and the classical stuff. But these, uh, the other things and the Mantovani was uh, was just happening. So uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, no transcriptions available at this moment. So let's let's wrap up what we did today. Orchestral sounds, and uh, as I told you, you can play these orchestral sounds in our complete lineup. We have the stage instruments, including the nice little module for a studio setup. Then we have the... Uh, Digital organs, the L3, you have heard Mr. Mauro Goya playing so beautifully on this instrument. We have the Combo J7, which is, in other words, a smaller version of the S9 in terms of sheer size. The engine inside, of course, is the same. Then, a little bit of promotion now, we have fantastic bags. They are very, very nice. They're very beautiful. They're very handy. They perfectly match with our instruments. And here again, that's one of the reasons we don't do so large displays because you see, it's very, very uh, reasonable size, the instrument. These bags even have a raincoat, which I think is hilarious because it happened. You, can, you are outside and suddenly it starts raining. So no more worries here. And um, yeah. And before jumping into uh, the next subject, uh, uh, thank you, Ryan. Um, thank you. Yeah, I, th I have one too, and I think is really great. Thanks a lot for the um, for the feedback. And um, also, uh, Ruben is just asking me if I can talk a little bit more about the S7 Pro M. So let's briefly do that. Uh, just called it on my web browser. So here is the S7 Pro M. In the S7 Pro M, you have all the sound engine of the S7. You have all the features, um, except for the motorized draw faders, which are exclusive to the S9 and also to the J7. Other than that, everything I have done today with the orchestra sounds and the piano sounds, of course, of the last webinars and the electric piano and the synth and the iPad connection and XMIR connection, etc., etc., is possible in the uh, Vivo S7 Pro M. But in the difference of the Vivo S7, the S7 Pro M has internal monitor speakers. They're quite strong, and uh, you can get away with them um, in a smaller section. Of course, you don't play big concert rooms with speakers of that size, but in a smaller, in a smaller. Um, Location or just for a pre for rehearsal with other musicians is perfect, and they sound amazing. All right, that was uh, this question, and here we go. USB memory is coming. So the speaker is loud. Yes, uh, the sound is quite loud. You don't want to have that at home. And about how many people? Uh, that's very difficult to answer because that's not a matter of how many people you can um, can enjoy the music that you play. It's more a matter of how big is the location, and um, et cetera, et cetera. But they are really loud, I, I promise. When I use it at home, usually I go for ten to fifteen percent of the settings uh, of the of the of the volume setting, and that's already enough for me to hear. Okay, what else do we have? Let me just jump here. And uh, before wrapping uh, really <laughs> finally up, um, I want to talk briefly about the uh, home series. As you know, Dexibel has the uh, stage instruments, the stage organs, the module, and um, it has also the home series in a beautiful Italian design and in different colors, obviously. And uh, there is just one new baby around the block. And this is my um, pleasure for the next upcoming webinar where we will keep you posted on what date this will be. 
And this is the Vivo H10. Beautiful in different colors, Dexable sound engine, and the first instrument we are bringing to the market with the next generation of CPU. All the specs we will get there later, um, and I will. I'm going to prepare a dedicated webinar for the Vivo H10, and uh, we will invite you there, and you will get the message, and you will be able to join as usual. And I'm already looking forward to that very, very much. So before going to have, um, uh, before going to do all the wrap up and uh, everything, I have produced a nice little video this week. And with this video, I would like to thank all of you for joining every time. Uh, Jay, thank you very much at that moment and for joining and for being with us and being interested. And uh, also, please um, connect, uh, if you like, on Facebook. Ralph plays Dexibel. Send me an invitation request, and uh, we will continue the discussion there. But before going into the final wrap-up, I want to play this video. Thanks to you guys. Please stay in, because it's not finished yet. And thanks, of course, to all the special guests that have contributed to this webinar series. So let's play the video. Thank you so much to all of you. It's a big pleasure to do this webinar series number one to nine, what we call the first season. Next webinar number 10 is coming up. We keep you posted about it. And once again, thanks to all around the world. And um, thanks to Mr. Stevie Wonder for writing this beautiful song, Summersoft, I just played. And uh, he loves our instruments as well, which is always great to know. And with this, I want to wish you a beautiful 
couple of weeks. Enjoy the summer. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Be careful. And I see you all back again at the webinar series very, very soon. Lots of love. Bye-bye.